Hey everyone. Okay. So if your child has poor handwriting, dysgraphia, um, you know, whether they have a diagnosis or not. And I want to say that a lot of kids don't get a diagnosis of dysgraphia. I don't really think for the most part it's necessary. So don't feel like you need to run out and, you know, pay $3,000 for psycho ed evaluation to tell you what you already know. Um, but what a lot of parents tell me is that they have pretty serious concerns about how much of a difficulty their child has with either handwriting in terms of it being legible or handwriting in terms of their child just has a really hard time getting their ideas and thoughts down on paper. And it's often not taken seriously enough as if it's really not that big of a deal. We can just give these this child assistive technology and so forth. But what we see day in, day out is that this really slows down a child's ability to shine academically. It holds them back with their grades and so forth, because there's a lot of situations where um, writing stuff on a, you know, or using assistive technology is a serious inconvenience and limits, ends up limiting your child, as well as, you know, a lot of parents will tell me, especially moms will say, like, I don't want him to be 25, still having to rely on assistive technology at his job. That's just not going to go over well. So um, it's, and handwriting is totally something like everyone thinks reading is the biggest deal, which I think it is huge for sure. But handwriting really follows close behind because um, I, you can only understand how much of an impact it can have on a child until it's happening to your child. And you realize you know, the teacher says, he's really smart. He's just lazy. Um, he's not, he, he can answer all the questions when I ask him, but he won't write it down on paper, but he can read fine. And people don't understand that when there is an output difficulty, so reading or dyslexia is the breathing in part of literacy. So whether it's reading or a breakdown with reading, that's the breathing in. The breathing out part is writing or when there's breakdown, dysgraphia. And if your child's having a hard time breathing out, basically expressing their ideas on paper, this is where the breakdown happens. And the breakdown happens where either the handwriting is so poor that nobody can really understand what they're writing. And then the second thing that I see a lot of is these kids can read, but to phonetically or properly get, uh, cor to correctly spell everything, let's put it really straightforward, to correctly spell all the words correctly, and get their thoughts down on paper and manage the fine motor coordination that's necessary to be able to write, this is like your child's having to do three different things at once. And that's why it's so hard for them to get their ideas down on paper because spelling correctly and the writing legibly is not an automatic process for them like it is for myself, probably yourself and most people. And so this is where these kids even will shut down. But I remember teaching these kids, they were so bright, but then everybody's been asked to write one to two paragraphs in a grade eight class on something, you know, and they write one or two sentences and the handwriting's really poor. But if you were to ask them to, you know, respond to say a text they had read, they could talk all about it and in quite intelligently and so forth. So my frustration with dysgraphia and writing issues, as a lot of you guys know, is that in the education system, it's seen as a minor inconvenience. There's two solutions. The answer is always technology. Technology does not correct the problem. It is not a lack of intelligence. It is a breakdown, oftentimes with the sensory motor system, as well as the breathing out part of literacy. So whether it's called dysgraphia or something else, it doesn't matter, or whether it's not labeled, there's a lot of things we can do to correct that, which I will be talking about in my, um, in my training on the 20th of December. So I'll put the link for to sign up for that below. Um, and so I know that a lot of moms will say to me, my frustration is, you know, if they could write better, they would have better marks. If they could write better, their homework would be done so much quicker. They wouldn't hate going to school and school wouldn't feel so, you know, so just torturous. They would have more confidence and motivation. It affects all of these things. It limits them academically in the long run. And we know, or I know, and I know a lot of you know, because you've tried it, extra practice doesn't make a difference, right? These kids are getting more practice than their peers, and yet they're struggling more with writing than most of their peers. The writing difficulty stems from several weaknesses. And one of those big weaknesses tends to be weak visual motor function. That needs to be addressed, which I will be talking about in my training on the 20th. But it's 
you know, comes down to why would you take the long way home and rely on strategies whenever you understand, when you start to understand this has to do with gross motor development, which affects fine motor development because gross motor skills has to come before or development has to come before fine motor development. And it also has to do with visual processing, which ties into that visual motor function as well as other factors. Um, so oftentimes I see, I see a bit of both. I see with dysgraphia, sometimes left brain weakness. Um, a lot of the times I actually find there's a left brain overdevelopment and a right brain weakness. Um, and these kids just have that. It's I find it actually more common in kids with ADHD and so forth. But in any case, strengthening the areas that are causing the difficulties is key. That's what I'll be talking about Tuesday, December 20th. I'm doing a training, three exercises to overcome letter reversal. So this pertains to reading difficulties as well as poor handwriting. So I'm going to put the sign up link in the comments below. Do reach out if you have any questions or if you want to book a clarity call. Um, and for now, let me know in the comments, what are you seeing at home or at school? What is your frustration with, you know, what your child's struggling with, or even the response from different uh, people in the education system or, you know, the help that you've sought out and so forth. So thanks for watching, everyone. Have a fantastic rest of the day. Bye.